and action. Welcome! Hello! Hi! Hi. We have an honorary guest today. She is the <laughs> awesome photographer Kyungmin Kim. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> So last night we watched a movie called Life, which is a reinterpretation of the story of Dennis Stock and James Dean. Quick overview, the film was released in 2015. Who's the director? Anton Cobain, who is a Dutch photographer and who is very awesome, so we're mm -hmm. very happy that he finally directed the movie. Iris, did you like the film? Yes, however, every time I see Robert Pattinson on screen, I think of vampires, which is not it's very right. useful in this movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think? Um, like, similar as your opinion, when I see the Hindu Han on the screen, mm, yeah. doesn't seem, it's because I know the real, because James didn't really exist, exist mm -hmm. I cannot focus about the fact that he is yeah. playing James Dean. Mm. I like about the... the I like about the fact that the story goes by the photograph that actually Danny Stock created once. There's a book, <laughs> <laughs> and this is called um, James Dean Revisits. It is like essay photography series by Danny Stock. And when you see the real, when you see the when you see the film, you can you can see how this single picture is created. I um I have to say I actually enjoyed the film despite myself. Mm -hmm. I usually decide within the first five minutes whether or not I'm gonna like a film, and 100% of the time I'm correct. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> this time round, I don't know. It was very weird. I've literally I've been watching James Dean movies for the past two weeks and doing research mm -hmm. into him, and then to launch into a movie where someone is portraying him, it's yeah. so difficult not to perceive it as yeah. a kind of. A mime? It seems like a family film, isn't it? Not really. Not really? I wouldn't call the sex like... scene in the toilet very family friendly. Ah. <laughs> it's just, to me, this whole movie is, is the fact that it's Robert Pattinson. And it's just, to me, he still looks like a depressed vampire. Every time I see him being sad on screen, I'm like, mm. ah, there is the vampire. As a photographer, okay. what do you think of the, the like, portrayal of a photographer as a working person but also like the mm. photographs that he took. Photographing, keep photo photographing someone could be really inti intimate to privacy. Yeah. Because you remember the scene that while the family dining they are like all happy together and mm. he wanted to portray the scene and suddenly it, I realized it could break the comfortable situation. I think when I see his photograph in in real one, mm -hmm. I kind of feel like it's really natural. It doesn't seem like really staged. So mm -hmm. I liked about it. So I like the narrative of how he portraying James Dean as a, not a cele cel celebrity, but like a person. Yeah, <laughs> a boy. I actually completely contrasted to you. I mm -hmm. thought that the film was really um, it was portraying it strongly as quite a staged mm -hmm. uh, series of photos. I think I just came up with my own kind of envisioning of how it happened in my head in New York in 1955 or 54. Mm -hmm. James Dean is like, hey, I'm gonna go into this barbershop or something like that. And he mm -hmm. goes in and mm -hmm. he's like, fancy a little trim over here. Mm -hmm. And Dennis Stock is just chilling in the corner with the camera. Uh -huh. Whereas in the film, uh -huh it was a little different in that respect and there was mm. a high attention. What I think is that it's a very interesting film because it is directed by a photographer. It's directed by somebody is who is originally a photographer so his okay. view of the story mm -hmm. is thus also from a photographer's point of view. But it's also showing the reality of mm. needing to make money by making photographs. Absolutely. I totally agree. It has like a re realistic point of how to make a living and yeah, yeah, yeah. In, the, in the movie. I actually was, um, I was reading only, it was just the Wikipedia page, mm -hmm. but it's interesting that you point that out because um, there was an extract that was from what um, Corbyn apparently said himself, which was that he was absolutely disinterested in looking at James Dean's idealization. Mm -hmm. I think f by looking at that relationship between photographer subject, mm -hmm. 
it really kind of shifts the focus a little bit away from the really painful portrayal of James Dean that I was trying to I feel it also has a lot to do with the fact that he is portraying a movie star. Yes. Yeah. And there it does there are mm -hmm. movies as examples mm -hmm. of how this person really Isn't. acted. Uh -huh. Another important case to bring in, My Week with Marilyn. Who's seen that? I think I watched that one first, uh -huh. and then I watched all of Marilyn Monroe's movies. Oh, but then there was no problem for me with that. I, mm. no, I don't remember feeling... Okay. I thought her portrayal was really good. Yeah, but I feel that might also have to do with the fact that it's Marilyn Monroe who's already been portrayed in so many different things. Everybody's aware of... Mm large parts of her private life, or James Dean's private life, is not that open, because there wasn't that much of it. In that movie, is she actually, like, auditioning or acting in movies at that point? It focuses on a week in her career where she's doing The Prince and the Showgirl with Laurence Olivier, mm. and she's getting um, coaching from, I, th I believe it was either Stella Adler, someone from the actor's studio. But there was huge tension on set, and it was looking into that. And so, um, should we move on to another aspect of the, like, for example, the cinematography, how it was shot? What did you guys think oh, of that? So beautiful. Yeah, it's soft. And I really like the starting point, when with the music, and he's like driving a car. And I really yeah. like that you can. That there's actual shots mm -hmm. inside the dark room. Ah. Oh, because yeah. for me, that is not a normal place to see. Mm -hmm. He has very precise cinematography. Mm -hmm. He's very well aware what mm -hmm. is in frame and what mm -hmm. is out of frame and he knows exactly what he wants. Mm -hmm. I really love about the composition, like every composition of the movie. So when you, it sounds a little bit dumb, but when you pause a little bit, I can use as a reference of when I'm taking photographs. I think that cinematography is really, really powerful when you reach that emotional peak in a story arc and in a script. Mm -hmm. And without that, cinematography, I mean, it's great if you pause the movie and, you know, you've got yourself a beautiful still, but the emotion just didn't really reach me as powerfully as I expected to. But, um, I, I do agree. I think, though, that he, you can feel his photographer <laughs> Yes. I think my favorite scene in a whole movie was the one in Times Square, because mm. to me, I, I love New York, and just seeing Times Square so empty. I feel a little awkward that all the Times Square was That's empty. why. That's yeah. why I was laughing, because yeah. I thought, no yeah, way would this like be look like that. I don't know, maybe 1950s. Yeah. So, what did you guys um, think of the sets, the locations, the mm -hmm. atmosphere of the scenery? Mm -hmm. I love New York. Mm -hmm. And for me, seeing New York in the 50s, or at least recreated in the 50s, was really awesome. What I like about the atmosphere thingy is how the magazine company and how the company uh, agency of Hollywood functions, like operate, how intense it is, yes. the Hollywood, how the actor screws everything and what happens next, when the, ac the arrogant actor didn't show up, what happens next, mm. <laughs> you know, like yeah. those funny hilarious well, moments. Well it's, it's sort of mm. in a way reminded me of Hill Caesar. He'll say so, yeah. When it, when it yeah. came to the whole Hollywood part of it, basically once a star became a star, they, they were owned by the company. And in this movie I really felt that as well. Mm -hmm. I'm very glad that Hollywood does not really work like that anymore. That's not to say that stars currently are not <laughs> really, are not also like, to a certain extent, like, kept in a certain way just to but make it's, money it's, but it's in a different way isn't it because the, the complete economic climate and social political climate has changed it's quite difficult to compare the two and i think that maybe later on there'll be movies made about the climate of for example uh feminism and um, capitalism and uh, ignorance to politics and mm -hmm. or, and the digital universe and social networking and all of these people's voices online that's going to be a totally different movie. true true what did you think of the way that they um 
the way that they adapted the, the photos. In the story. Yeah. I like how the story goes by each individual Image. yeah, photograph. I find it very yeah. interesting to go from this mm. s like 2D mm. still mm. photographic image into a 3D set world. You as a viewer have more freedom because you can actually look around in these old photographs. Mm -hmm. But it also shows how completely ridiculous it is to play the bongos in the middle of like cows and... Interesting point. You have one piece of artwork and then it's put in a different artistic context and that context is totally different and it mm -hmm. can affect your original perception of the original artwork in its mm -hmm. form. And so when I was looking at the the structure of this movie, mm -hmm. it got to a point where you were like, okay, well, I, you know what's coming next, you know what photo they're going to do next. Okay. When you do a film, you mm -hmm. need to bring out another layer, you need mm -hmm. to keep going deep, keep pushing, and keep mm -hmm. uh, probing your characters mm -hmm. in order for there to be more of a, an emotional a kind of revealing of, of something. And I think this movie wasn't trying to do that, which I totally respect, I understand everyone has different aims. But I think that that's what it was lacking, because at the end of it, it was just a movie about what happened during those few days. Big deal. For me, like, I have no idea what the photographs are. I, I've probably seen a couple of them because of you reading the book. But I do find it very interesting that to see that even, even like, normal street photography is still can be very staged in one Absolutely. way or another. Speaking of obscene, I was really hoping to see the travel scene. Travel they are going to Indiana. Indiana together. I was really looking forward to see that and it happens like after half of the movie and it was like so tiny bit. I was expecting that there is a different kind of James Dean's like past and his character and it wasn't really it was really smooth and flat and not dig enough, like, as you guys mentioned before. Emotionally. Yeah, so... He's more concerned about the visuals than he is about the actual story. At least, to me, it felt mm. like that. Then again, I don't know what the story is based on. I think it was quite interpretive, because the nuances that I got from the, the book were totally different to what I felt in the movie. In one of the photos where he's passed out on, you remember, at the club, yeah, yeah. And um, the the caption to that photo was that he was an insomniac and that he just completely mm -hmm. collapsed sometimes. And in the film, I think it was portrayed like he was drunk, drunk. and like he drank yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, you know, I'm a minor detail, but I mean, hey, this is a portrait of a human being. And I mean, Dennis Stock's character, my God. <laughs> He was just, he was a complete mess. I'm so, I really hope that the real Dennis Stock did watch the movie. If you watch, for example, a James Dean movie or something else, that's always going to be your first perception of James Dean. Conti Could you know, be. contributing to what yeah. you're really... Well, doing. this is never going to be my first perception of James Dean because I in no way believe that James Dean in any way resembles what they... <laughs> That mm. to his character in this yeah. movie. As much as I like Day in the Hand, this portrayal of James Dean was just terrible. Mm. And I have not seen any James Dean movies. So his portrayal of a human person was terrible. I'm so mm. glad you said that so I didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nice. <laughs> okay. I'm the critical yeah. one. <laughs> if it deals with biology, Biogra biography, biography. <laughs> cool fact of person's life, I think you should be more careful about, especially what you mentioned in some yeah, I mean, because I am really easy to be brainwashed <laughs> when I watch film. So that's, that's why history film, like period film is so important in some aspect to a certain audience. Did you guys feel that he was, um, that the director was quite critical of both characters because it came across that way to me yeah. strongly. I felt he was more critical of James Dean than he was of the photographer. <laughs> because his journey to photographing him was really hard, isn't it? Like he banged the door and he'll <laughs> climb the, <laughs> to the window <laughs> and see he's in there or Yes, not, exactly. And, yeah. Like with that scene. But for me it was he was 
it sort of felt like the director loved the photographer more than he loved James Dean, which is exactly what he said in that interview thing he you saw. He, he, yeah, we will, I think he's just got more sympathy with the photographer than the idol. Yeah. Taking a photograph is really Oh, hard. but uh, that, that's <laughs> really damn <laughs> But that's when you're dealing with stars. <laughs> yeah. We're not Probably. stars yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, about you guys, but I am. We're keeping that in. <laughs> You were saying that James Dean is the idol, but I feel for the director, uh, Dennis Stock was the idol. Mm. <laughs> that you do feel through the victimization, I think, because the way that he victimized him. <laughs> yes. Like you had one like shit scenario follow after the other to the point where you're like, dude, come on. It wasn't supposed to be a comedy, but sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> um. Anything else we wanted to add? Go watch James Dean movies, they're amazing and I Actual think... Actual James Dean movies. <laughs> Not this one. He Not is the... a terrific actor. I think he's, he can really, he's really able to adapt, like Marlon Brando, like most of the method actors. Mm, you know, yeah. they're so receptive to every role. And it would have been just amazing to see what, you know, what would have come next. It might have been crap, might have been good. Been... <laughs> well, he had three starring roles. Yeah. That was his career. That's and there was a Walter Happens movie as well. Mm. Recommend one. What well, was your best choice? Funny face. Funny face, okay. Oh, I see breakfast at Tiffany's. Okay, no, okay. Yeah, I have to actually agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much for watching our vlog. Mm -hmm. Um, we... We didn't particularly enjoy the movie, but kind of did. <laughs> yeah. A little un undetermined. Have so, you know, yes. if you if you want to go out and watch the film, go ahead. Go watch it. Yeah, go ahead. If yeah, you want to be constantly reminded of the vampire that is Robert <laughs> Pattinson, please watch this movie. <laughs> Min, thank you for being in our video. Thank you. Please come. Thank back. you, guys. Please come back. Yes. yes. And uh, thank you for watching. And we'll see you later. Yes. Ciao. 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 Bye. One, two, three.